everyone. A very warm welcome to another exciting episode of Psychology Talks. And today we're going to discuss the art of communication. I think communication is one of the most important skill in anyone's life because if you cannot communicate what is in your mind, nobody would understand you. Nobody would have the idea that what you're trying to say or what, what is in your mind. So this is one of the very important skill whether you want to progress or proceed further in your life in profession professionally or personally you need to have some sort of command over communication and a lot of people try to master languages a lot of people try to have command over different aspect of communication because communication is not only done through uh, through words there you we understand the other other's perspective from body language from their wives and there are hundreds of ways of communicating so but one of the major aspect is through uh, words or verbally so today we will discuss the different aspects of communication and that's why i have invited uh, an expert in this field uh, his name is dr jose rodriguez he is the communication expert he is a professor educator and workshop facilitator he has won several awards uh, for quality of his research from national communication association international Communi uh, and association of teachers uh, educators and his work has been acknowledged and featured on renowned media and tv ch channels he is a trainer consultant for public and pri uh, and private organization across the nation so let's welcome Dr. Jose Rodriguez. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure to finally meet you virtually. We've been, we've been yeah. communicating via language on LinkedIn. So it's such a joy to be here, an absolute honor. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Actually, I am a really big fan of yours because I know we didn't connect, uh, I think connected only a few months ago but uh, your content is always so catchy it's so apt that you know the message you want to give is very clear and in a very unique and subtle way so i'm a great fan of yours it's, it's an honor for me to have you here thank you thank you and and again relating to that wonderful introduction that you just shared really the power of of language the power of communication the power of messages to connect us, right? And to yeah. allow us to share a message, to share meaning that then creates a moment of solidarity, right? Through the words, through the poetry, through the metaphors that we use, all those features really are vehicles for allowing us to transmit a message that hits another person in a way that is meaningful, significant, and allows them to connect with us in ways that work. Yeah, that's amazing. This is actually a very interesting topic because as I said, there are several aspects of communication. It's not only like through verbally, although it's the main part, it's the major component of communication. There are several ways. Anyway, so we definitely talk about it, but uh, first of all, just tell us a little bit more about you because I've given a very brief introduction, but of course your, um, your life has been like so many, you have so many achievements. And uh, so tell us a little bit more about your life journey. So our audience will get to know you better. Thank you. So I started out in, in communication as a student at the university. I was in a huge lecture hall with 275 people, you know, <laughs> just a dot, on the radar and yeah. i remember the first day of class the, the professor came down the hallway stood at center stage and just commanded the audience with stories and metaphors and some of the features that i talked about earlier and his name was uh, dr ellis hayes and i fell in love with the concept of communication and i really fell in love with the discipline and the process and at the time, he was developing a series of workshops, a series of training programs to help people not only become better communicators, but also to improve their way of relating in the world, right? So I went to an initial workshop, an initial evening 
invitational evening, informational evening. And I took the training and then slowly over time, I became part of the community. I became established as a trainer for his organization. We became lifelong friends, business partners. And I talk a little bit about that journey in my uh, TEDx talk because that was really transformational for me. Like so many people finding someone that is a mentor or an ally and sees you for who you are and really invites you in, right? Invites you out of our shell, right? Where we're kind of stuck in here in our heads and very self-centered and really brings you out and allows you to perform as you are, right? To, a pro yeah. to perform and be real and authentic because they see that spark in you or they notice uh, something in you that's unique or even they notice an aspect of themselves. And through that process, I was able to connect with Ellis and become part of his life. And that was the beginning of, of my journey in, into communication. That opened some doors to uh, apply to graduate school, to move on and and get a PhD and really develop my skills as, as a scholar, as a researcher, and then bring that dimension to uh, communication as well. So today I have the good fortune of teaching over 300 students every semester, I think about 15,000 in total through, throughout my career, which is a really, really large number because before uh, I, I would teach almost like a thousand students a, a semester. It's a little bit lower now. Now it's about more like 500 total, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity and a huge enterprise that has been incredibly rewarding. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. And, and you mentioned that, you know, someone uh, like Dr. Uh, Alice Hayes uh, was the one who actually saw the potential in you. And then maybe it's, or maybe it, he was the one who actually took out the best in you. And and I believe, I always prefer to work with mentors because uh, mentors always guide us in a very subtle way. Sometimes we are not able to see our own potential, but they are the ones who highlight. So uh, that I can definitely relate with you because uh, uh, sometimes we are just trying to figure out where to go, what to do but they are the ones who actually guide you through. So this is a very important aspect, yes. Absolutely, so someone like you said is able to see right through you, right? They, they take a moment and a series of moments and just look into you and see your skills, your potential, your spark. And then when they reflect that back to you, you start to see it in yourself. And you probably already saw it in some way. So I don't think many of us are completely blind to all of that. Yeah. But we realize from a very human perspective that it takes more than our perception to make something a reality in the social world. In the world of the social, it requires another person, a group of people to realize the value that we bring to the moments of life, create solidarity with that, and then make it a larger reality. That's really where we where we move from, from just imagination, right? Just a, a figment of what you think is going on to reality because you join a community of people. You join in solidarity with others and make your life journey a reality, make your vocation something that you live because others partner with you. And that's the reason why I love collaborating uh, with, with people like you, leaders like you. I love collaborating on LinkedIn because essentially we're harnessing the power of that process of belonging, solidarity, community to create a better world in ways that work for the greater good. Yeah, absolutely. You just said it so beautifully. Uh, so moving on to our discussion, and since we are discussing the art of communication, so tell us what exactly is art of communication? What, what is good communication? <laughs> yes. Right. This is the beginning, right? We talk about yeah. communication all the time. And what is it? Um, and I actually didn't know this until I got into graduate school. So if you don't know, welcome. You're you're in a good in a good space. 
I remember going into the first semester of graduate school and I'm going, man, I've been studying communication for a long time. What is it? And one of my other mentors just nailed it. And he said, look, everyone, communication is the process of creating, mm -hmm. sending, and interpreting messages. Mm -hmm. And it really is this three-part process where we're constructing messages in our mind and the body, and then we're delivering or sending the message via some channel or medium. And then we're interpreting the results of the message or the impact of the message. And then based on that analysis of the impact or the effect, we either change our approach to communication or we stop communicating or we just give up, right? It's this mm -hmm. process of testing, creating, sending, interpreting, looking and evaluating at the impact that we're having and then adjusting our approach correspondingly based on the feedback that we got. And really that's the process. The, the mastery comes in honing those particular features of the steps, right? The construction of messages, right? What am I going to say? That's a huge thing. Yeah. What am I going to say? What am I going to type? What words am I going to use? That process of construction is huge. And then sending the message, right? Are we going to send it verbally? Are we going to send it non-verbally? Are we going to send it through a mediated channel on LinkedIn or on YouTube, right? And then lastly, what effect is that message having on other people? Are other people persuaded? Are other people happy? Are other people in alignment with us? Are other people angry? What effect are we having? And is that the effect that we want to have in life? That becomes a huge question. Yeah, I mean, this is, you You actually simplified it so much that the three process, three, ac uh, three action process, you know, it's like just to receive it, um, uh, to see it and then receive it. And then, sorry, I think I missed it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> It's, it's okay. Uh, it's simplified, but yes, I think yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, the three is the interpretation. I would say the interpretation of the message is the key. I would say whatever we receive, the way we interpret, and then it is up to us that how we respond to it. So it's this is what I actually see it the communication. But yeah. um, now the question remains that okay, this is the process, of course, and you mentioned the lots of other aspects to it as well the, the different components that you know right. that how to actually adjust our stance towards it and how to interpret it and again this will get influenced by what is the major purpose of the communication because then we'll realize that how it's going to impact on the other person or on the other like is it going to create an influence a negative influence the positive ones and that will again link with the purpose or the objective of the communication Exactly right, and and you know you talk about it in, in your book. Right? I mean, this 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 yeah. whole. I mean, let's be honest, right? This whole yeah. process of of using language and thinking, right? And thinking make it makes it so well. What is thinking? But the process of constructing yeah. a particular message that will then surface as mm -hmm. verbal communication, nonverbal communication, mediated communication. Or, or some other form. So it begins with thought or emotion or sensation, some type of an inner process that is arising organically in you. And then that process of formulating a message of some kind. And, and at times, really honestly, we don't know what we're gonna say. In this moment, I have not planned the discourse. I don't have a script in front of me. I don't know exactly what you're going to ask me. And yet this, this beautiful flow of messages is arising from a place that I don't even understand if I'm being completely yeah. honest and humble, right? That's the, the honesty of it all. I haven't created some script. I'm not some robot, you know, putting play and then letting the tape run. There is this beautiful organic alchemical process that is arising beautifully from this space yeah. that we open to 
And then those messages arise through inspiration, through collaboration. Uh, this conversation is working really well because we're collaborating with each other, right? There's a, a beautiful yeah. interplay where I'm building on your ideas, you're building on mine. We're going with the flow of the transaction, of the communication. And therefore, you see this nice little flow, this wonderful conversation where people can follow the trajectory. And the beauty of it is it's not controlled. It's not robotic. It's arising organically in those sacred moments of dialogue in solidarity with another person that makes it really happen. And that's where the, the other comes in, right? It isn't this narcissistic thing like, oh my gosh, me in my head creating all this stuff. It becomes about the otherness of the other, right? Yeah. Inviting the other to join you in a process of communication, making those connections and building relationships that work for you, for me, for our families, for our greater community and for the greater good. Yeah, absolutely. I actually love this, the way you explained it, because that's exactly um, I've written in my book as well, and especially the chapter thoughts I have explained it because, you know, that's how we channel our thoughts and yeah. the way that the, the communication, the conversation that is happening between us right at the moment, it's like, you know, maybe like I share one thought and the idea and then it clicks to you and then it triggers a thought process in your brain or in your mind. And then again, it may be like uh, collecting the ideas or the thoughts from the universe. And then of course we get the idea. Then we start getting all these thoughts from the, uh, the, uh, the process that is, you know, triggered by yeah. our souls or something or whatever, like, you know, the chemical reactions in our mind and then attracting all the thoughts specifically or particularly of this subject communication yeah. right we could have talked about let, let's say if if we are talking about let's say um some professional environment of engineering or something right then the thoughts would be flowing in that direction but now we are directing the flow of the, our thoughts in particular direction with this yeah. two-way communication like i share some idea and then you share some idea and building yeah. on the process and this right. is again that i would say that um how deeply involved we get into this communication it sets the path to to create the thoughts at certain level because you know sometimes um, we've seen that people actually have conversation at a low level let's say that people yeah. are discussing uh, people or you know they're complaining about it so their consciousness level their state of mind is also at certain level and then they, the, the, the flow of thoughts is directed only in that level. So that's that's what exactly my point of view was like the, the higher we go, the higher our thoughts will receive. I mean, they will vibrate at certain frequency and receive those thoughts from the universe or from our mind. Or this is the again, the mystery. Of this. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Exactly. Because, you know, ultimately, we don't know and we put a name on it because yeah. we're trying to understand. Right. So we're using language to try to understand a process that we don't have full understanding. Yeah. But in my mind, I think that that's the beauty of it. And I, and I think that you would probably agree that the mystery is part of the beauty, because when we don't know, we come into a place of being open. Right. Yeah. Right. We come into a yeah. place of surrender. We come yeah. to a place of letting go, of opening up a space for something to arise that wasn't there prior to our interaction. Right. Mm -hmm. We are creating it, co-creating it in a beautiful, sacred dynamic that is ethical, moral, sacred, beautiful. And as long as we play and get ourselves out of the way by participating in the play, it just goes on and on and on and on. And, and it's and it's beautiful. And I think the trick is to uh, join someone, to partner with someone, to have dialogue and conversation and exchange, build on that, allow the flow to happen and really get 
out of the way and let it be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, one thing that I also wonder sometimes that, yes, yeah, that's very important to have this dialogue with someone because that uh, collectively we create more frequency and more because, you know, that generates. I also believe in terms of energy, actually. So when we uh, uh, combine our like minds or brain together, of course, there's more power, more energy is creating. But one thing that I also think about that, you know, um, we need to have these sort of dialogues with ourselves as well, because yeah. that's that's the time that, you know, you create certain frequencies with yourself to elevate your own self, soul or elevate your own self. Yeah. So it's, it's very much important because a lot of times what uh, when I deal with people or when, and I interact with um, others like clients, uh, or even like when I'm helping someone voluntarily, so I actually ask them to focus on their thoughts. That like what is their yeah. thought process? What are they saying to themselves? And most of the time, I've, I've uh, heard from <laughs> hear from like people that they actually think about daily chores, that what's happening. They're doing the commentary about you know uh, what's happening. Maybe they, they're thinking about what coffee they would want to drink, what food they want to eat or something or what dress you got, are they going to wear. So yes, these are very important things, but they need to have certain dialogues with themselves that to ponder about all the mysteries of the universe as well, or maybe ponder about themselves. And that's when they can actually elevate themselves. So yeah, I think this is like our, a very philosophical <laughs> uh, conversation and communication. I think some people may like it, some people may not like it because um, they have their own pers uh, perspective about sure. this particular sure. topic. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I just want yeah. to ask them a bit general question here, <laughs> that how yeah. one can actually have good communication, especially like when people are uh, applying for a job or doing the interviews. So, you know, they need to have... Uh, they need to show that they are yeah. good. They have some good communication skills. So, what exactly your tips on improving their communication skills? A absolutely, thank you. Um, <laughs> I want to just jump back to something that you yeah. said. I, I yeah. you had a wonderful flow, and I didn't want to interrupt, but I was going. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that whole process of of inner dialogue or inner conversation or inner mystery. So, I have three questions that I talk about very often. Uh, I talk about it more eloquently in the TED talk. And the first question is about identity. And that question is an internal question where you ask, what type of person do I want to be in this situation, right? Mm -hmm. And the second question is about intentionality. And that question is, you know, what purpose do I pursue in this scene or in this moment? And the last question is about agency, which is what do I wish to do in terms of behavior? How do I wish to act in this context or in this situation? So you have a question about identity, you know, who am I? A question about intentionality, what's my purpose? And then a question of action, what do I wish to do? And I give the example to, to bring it home to people of imagine you're walking down the street and you see an elderly woman with a cane in one hand and she has a stack of books in the other. And you can almost see the train wreck coming. She stumbles and she falls and the books go everywhere. What's your first response? For most of us, the first response is, oh my gosh, I want to go help. Is she okay? Um, should I call for help, what does she need? But the first mm -hmm. response is this very empathic move to help. So when we go back to those questions, I say, all right, who are you in this moment? Well, I'm a person who cares. Mm -hmm. Two, what's your intention? Well, to be helping, helpful and kind and supportive. And what do you choose to do? Well, I choose to go over there. I choose to ask her if she's okay. I choose to lend a hand. And you notice how that empathy is perfectly aligned with those three questions and leads to behavior that is ethical, helpful, and useful. So that's a way to check yourself within, 
What type of a person am I being in this situation? What is my intention or my purpose? And what am I doing that is aligned with the identity, the personhood that I am choosing at this moment? And are those three things aligned? If they are, then I'm probably communicating and behaving in a way that is authentic yeah. and is congruent with my essential values as a human being. And therefore, mm -hmm. I feel good about myself. I feel happy. I feel aligned. I feel joy because my movement within is consistent with my movement in the outer world. And I get confirmation that I am a good person and I have good intentions and I'm doing good deeds. And I start to cultivate a feeling of feeling good, feeling joy, feeling, um, you know, at peace with my inner inner and outer self. So that's one way to kind of bridge those gaps between inner communication and outer communication. Those three questions are, are very helpful. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. I think that that's very clear that uh, even like, for example, these questions will help people even if they are going to uh, go for some interview or, or dealing with any person in personal life also. They need to, first of all, ask these questions that what is basically who they are identity then then exactly what is the intentionality and mm -hmm. the third point is the purpose right that what exactly is the purpose for this so this will give them clarity about themselves and as you mentioned once we know about ourselves we become more authentic and more transparent i would say because there is nothing there to hide and when mm -hmm. this is the feeling, this we I feel that then our soul radiates. I would say <laughs> because that's how it is. I feel that there's no layer to hide. We feel more confident in yeah. our confident in ourselves. You know that whatever we are saying, we don't have to hide anything because what happen, whatever happens is most of the time. And people I've seen that people who go for some interviews, they they're hiding. Let's say they're trying yeah. to say something that they are really good at, and which actually they are not. They will never feel yeah. confident, and and the other person will get it at the very yeah. moment they say it because the because as as I mentioned earlier, communication is not only done through words or through uh, verbally. Uh, there are lots of other cues, yeah. our uh, nonverbal cues, why right. everything is there right. and the other person is there to judge you and they can get it. So yeah. one thing is very important <laughs> for any communication. What I get the message from your uh, point is that we have to be authentic and yes. these are the important one. Exactly. So, when, you know, going back to your question now about uh, interviews or presenting yourself um, genuinely when you're applying for a job or in some professional context, it begins with self, right? It begins with this idea of who am I, what is my purpose, and what do I wish to do? And when there is alignment with that, it becomes a lot easier to perform and behave in a genuine manner that works for you. So, in an interview, right, I would ask these questions of myself, you know, who am I in this situation? What is it that I hope to get from this interview process? And what is it that I can do to achieve those outcomes? So if I say, well, you know, I want to apply for a job as a, you know, as an engineer, right? So I'm an engineering person. And my intent is to secure a job with an engineering company or designing some a product or designing some type of software. And the thing that I want to do is to maybe showcase my work, provide an example, uh, talk about my experience, talk about a story that shows a transformation I had in the past, the changes that came for it in the present, and how that has created a future that I can be proud of. And that's one way to kind of package yourself in a very nice way, right? You answer those three questions, and then you create a, a story that talks about a place where you were in your career in the past, maybe not successful, maybe uh, struggling, maybe having some challenges. And then you talk about how you overcame those challenges, what you did differently that caused you to shift or caused a catalyst in your trajectory as a professional. And then you talk about the last part, what that created for you, 
how that created positive outcomes, what results generated uh, for you, and how was that helpful? And that's one way to address interview questions is put it in the form of a story talking about the past, some transformation or change that happened in the future or not too long ago, and how that change created positive outcomes that you can share with your future employer. Yeah, that's brilliant advice, actually. This is, um, it's, I would say the preparation is the key element here. And it's not only about, a uh, lot of people, what I've seen is that they, uh, they do research a lot about the company or something, they get the ideas about the, their figures that what are they doing, but what they miss is that they don't know that what are they doing <laughs> in these practices. <laughs> so like, you know, if they know that what the company is doing, they know that what they've done in the past, but how they can be a valuable asset for the company. So how they can fit in uh, the best in that particular role where they can add value. And as you just clearly said that, you know, this again, they need to create a story that how what they are, how the transformation happens and what is the future they think. So that's going to connect all the dots <laughs> and to present the best self. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? That that's a, that's a struggle because people will tell you, "Oh, when you go for a job interview or when you're pitching somebody, you need to have your story." And then you yeah. go, "Great, great. Well, how do you create a story?" And, and <laughs> trust me, there's a lot of ways to do that. And my model, the model that I just shared, which isn't mine, it's known throughout the world as the basic mm -hmm. structure of a story. And we've known this for thousands of years. But the bottom line is, when you have those features in place. Oh, I talk about the past and I share a struggle that occurred at some point and how that struggle created an opportunity for me to shift and transform. And then, boom, there's an opportunity to show how that transformation made a difference so that I became a better uh, communicator, a better engineer, a better whatever it is that you're applying for, that basic model of a, of a past challenge, a, a transformation, and then how that transformation created a larger positive outcome, that really is the basic piece of a story that's going to work in an interview. And you can share that story in five minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I did this exercise with my students maybe about two weeks ago. I shared that basic model. We got out index cards and everybody wrote out a little story in about five minutes. And then we shared it. We shared it with the class. Everybody got an opportunity to share. And at the end of the semester, people said, wow, that was a really helpful exercise. I'd never thought about what to say in the form of a story that made sense so that the interviewer would get a nice trajectory of the arc of my history, my contributions, and how I changed in a way that was helpful. Yeah, amazing. That's amazing. Um, I know we can actually go on and on and talk <laughs> about it for hours, but uh, I'm afraid the time of the show is actually reaching to an end. So what one advice would you give to our audience today? What one tip or what one last uh, note you would want to share with our audience? One last thing is those three questions I think are, are mm -hmm. critical, right? The idea of who am I in this situation? What is my purpose? And what can I do for the larger good? And I think by answering those questions, we come home to ourselves first, and then we come home to each other in a moment of solidarity that works for the greater good. Yeah, that's amazing, actually. These questions, these three questions, I think they're the key questions. And it's, it can solve a lot of problem if we answer this. <laughs> and, and, and believe me, these are not the easy uh, right, no. <laughs> It's not something, it looks easy that what is the identity, but a lot of people don't know their identity because most of the time they just put a layer after layer and layer and they don't know, they, they lost their true self. <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much uh, for your time. And what is the best way uh, our audience can reach out to you? So there's a variety of ways uh, okay. on LinkedIn. As you know, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn and very easy to find on yeah. there. Um, I'm also uh, available via the web. I believe my my um, okay. my 
website is www.joserodriguez.solutions. Uh, I'm also on Twitter. So check me out on social media, but LinkedIn is definitely a good place to go. Okay. I I'll share all your links in the chat uh, after the show so people can uh, reach out to you through this. Wonderful. So thank you so much for joining us. And it was an amazing session. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed it. So thank you so much. Uh, and it, and ho I hope that we will uh, continue our these conversations in future as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been such a, a pleasure to connect with you. A great conversation. We had a wonderful flow and as always, just uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful to connect with you. Thank you so much. And thanks to our audience that whoever like, uh, get to take the time and listen to us. So thank you for joining us. Okay, so thank you and bye-bye.